Well, I really struggled with the message today. I really wanted to skip this verse. It's an amazing verse in Proverbs chapter 15. And I, I really, really, really wanted to skip this verse. In fact, I just want to close the book of Proverbs all together and don't even read it anymore because it messes with me. I don't like it sometimes. But this one put me in a real conundrum. That's a big word. You didn't know I know such big words, did you? It put me in a real conundrum. Uh, the proverbial between a rock and a hard place. As my daddy used to say, the devil in the deep blue sea put me in the middle of a, of a real should I, should I not? Am I going to offend somebody? Can I do this without offending somebody? Can I tiptoe through the tithers and be nice? And yet, there it is. So Dan, what do I do? Never mind. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, see, I was raised by a father who was hard. He was a child of the Depression. He was a workaholic, we call him today. He, he, he was raised working. In the ninth grade, he was forced to go to work in a cotton mill. And he worked a second shift in the cotton mill every day, Monday through Friday, all four years of high school. I, I wear his high school ring, my father's high school ring. Graduated high school in 1950. As far as I know, he's the first Humphrey in all our genealogy and all our family tree to ever graduate high school. He was the oldest of eight brothers and sisters. I think he's only one of maybe four maybe five, but I think only one of four uh, brothers and sisters who actually graduated high school. I don't think most of the rest of them didn't. But dad graduated high school. All four years of high school, he worked in the cotton mill every night. And as far as I know, he never one time cashed a check. His father <laughs> took his check away from him and drank it up. He was an alcoholic. And spent it on food for the family and whatever. Uh, you know, whether he drank his check or drank his own check and food was like whatever. And dad used to tell me he'd give him $2 a week at the beginning of the week to eat lunch on all week long. Because that's back in the day when you could buy lunch for 70, 50, 75 cents. Uh, soda pop kids was a nickel for a 12 ounce Pepsi. And that's how much it cost way back in, in those days. But, but he, he had $2 a week to eat lunch on. And if he spent it all early in the week, he just didn't have no lunch the rest of the week. He had to work a whole full shift in the cotton mill. Say, that's terrible. You know, well, he survived. He made it. He didn't die. And he lived to raise a family and raise three kids. And all three of us are in church today. All three of us worked jobs and got families. He didn't really do too bad. Was everything he did right? No. Was he wrong? Yes. Did he screw up? Big time. But we survived. Now, am I uh, saying go do that? No, I'm not saying. I'm just saying stuff happens. Life happens to all of us. Every one of us. Got a story around over here from a bootlegging grandma all the way to a, a abandoned parents to an absentee parents to an orphanage home to being raised on the streets. We got all the above in this in this building and, and, and beyond. And, and and I'm just saying we all sur we survive. We're here. And and, and I, I I just wanna challenge you today that, that, that no, I said all that because you know as I share this verse, it's gonna be a little difficult for me to share this verse with you because it, 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 I only know one thing. And I jokingly say, my father taught me. That growing up, that he, the only thing he really taught me how to do was work. And dad told me that he only wanted me to work a half a day. He didn't care which 12 I worked, as long as I worked a half a day. 24 hours, 12 hours, half a day.
Anyway, never mind. Okay. Uh, he, he, he only wants... I, I, I mean, I... I so so I'm, I'm giving you my background this morning. Refresher. Some of you knew it. Most of you knew it. Some didn't. And, and, and so when I share what I'm fixing to share, you know where I'm coming from. Now, am I, am I going to say everything I say is going to be absolutely right? No. But I'm reading the Bible, and the Bible is absolutely right. The Bible is 100% right. My commentary, my sermonizing may not be all 100% right. But I give it to you the best I can from where I come from. And then you take what I say and you put it in your hopper. And you process it with the Bible. And then you figure out what you get to do. See, that's the way this deal works. I'm not telling you what you got to do. I'm offering you some suggestions, some advice. My processing on what I read in this book. That's all I can give you. I cannot give you any more. I wish I could. I wish I was smarter. I wish I was more educated. I wish I knew more. But, but, but I can only give you what I can give you from where I come from in my own brokenness. And if you don't think you're broken... Jack, you are really broken. We all got our struggles and we all got our issues. But this verse, the first half of this verse, a lot of the Proverbs that we're in now have two truths. And sometimes they're opposite truths. Sometimes they're supportive truths. And this one today is in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 19. And it says, A lazy person's way is blocked by briars but the path of the upright is an open highway now the new king james translation says the way of the lazy man is like a hedge of thorns but the way of the upright is a highway and i just had to throw in the message version which i really think is kind of neat Sometimes the path of lazy people is overgrown with briars. But the diligent walk down a smooth road. Now that's a little different verse, word for the righteous person. The, the, this, this translation uses the word diligent instead of righteous or upright. Because the Hebrew word there translated upright is literally means upright and at it, diligent, not giving up. Um, I, I coined a word years ago. I did this. I think I did. I might have stole it from somebody. I can't remember. But I, 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 I don't know if I made it up or I stole it. But anyway, it came from somewhere. It's called stick to activity. Stick to activity. Not giving up. Refusing to quit. Being diligent. Refusing to quit. The New Testament equivalent is the word endurance. Run the race, Hebrews chapter 12, run the race with diligent, laying aside every weight that, 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 that trips you up and messes you and with you and, and, and run the race, the long haul marathon. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. So often we think it's a hundred yard dash. We can work really hard and then, and then we'll, whew, got that race over and we're done. No, it's a marathon. It's continually going. Uh, one of the books I read many, many years ago was a book, if you've not read it, if you're, especially if you're a young person and uh, looking and growing and, and headed up in your life, I would highly recommend it. It really changed my life. It's called See You at the Top. Uh, See You at the Top. Written by my uh, good friend, and I call him my good friend because I actually met him one time. So uh, he's my good friend and author, Zig Ziglar. Old Zig. And he was from Yazoo City, Mississippi. He was southern as cornbread, but he was an amazing speaker. And I met him several times. And he said that there's plenty of room at the top of success. There's plenty of room at the top, but. The elevator's broken. You got to take the stairs. You can't push the button. You got to climb the stairs. And he has a little picture in his book of, of what labeled each stair. 
And you got to take it step one step at a time and you got to climb the step. Now, and then he says there's plenty of room at the top, but there's not enough room to sit down. Success is a journey, not a destination. So this verse says the lazy person's way is blocked with briars. But the path of the upright is an open highway. Man, there's so many ways to go with this. Um, I found a few verses that connect with it. Let me share a couple of those. Proverbs 22, 5. Corrupt people walk a thorny, treacherous road. Whoever values life will avoid it. Corrupt people. Now, let me back up, Mike, while we're... Or, uh, Laura Lee, back up to that verse again in um, the message or what, either one, New, New, New Living in 1519. The path of the lazy person. I, I looked up the Hebrew word for lazy here and I really, really, really worked hard on this verse, this word. Because a lot of Hebrew words, like the word for upright, are righteous. A lot of the Hebrew words can be translated, like some of them can be translated six or eight different ways in English because of the broadness of the word. This word for lazy is not one of them. <laughs> it can only, it's only translated two ways in the King James Version. And it's, a, it's listed 14 times in the King James Bible. The word in the, in the Hebrew Old Testament, the whole entire Old Testament, it only appears 14 times. And it's translated two different words in the King James. One of them is lazy. And the other one is slothful. <laughs> um, th there's no other way to read it. I really tried, but there's just no, it, it, I thought, well, maybe it's the opposite of upright, like it's maybe evil or, um, or maybe corrupt or, or maybe, uh, you know, treacherous or mean or because those words are translated uh, in the other verses. But then it's just two words, lazy or slothful. And guess what? They both mean the same thing. There was one other word that it threw in there in, in the meaning. He used the word in, indolent or indolent. It was in the, def, in the, in the dictionary, in Hebrew dictionary that I was reading said indolent. Was, and I what in the world does that mean? So I looked up old indolent. And you know what it meant? <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> Apathetic. Apathetic is one of those. I don't care. Apathy is a byproduct of laziness. I just don't care. So, um, Proverbs 13, 15. A person with good sense is respected, but a treacherous person is headed for destruction. These are just some related verses. Proverbs 4, 19. The way of the wicked is like total darkness. They have no idea what they're stumbling over. Now, I, I pulled up a couple of different passages of Scripture in Proverbs, that, and I, I label this characteristics of lazy people. Because, see, it's hard for me to, to say that a person is lazy, because, number one, it's none of my business. I was talking to somebody this week. I remember in my 40s, mid-40s, I was right back there, about where that welcome banner is back there, Tim, just right in front of you. And I, we used to have chairs all the way across there. And, and I um, was working on a vacuum cleaner in the church. I was replacing a belt on one of our vacuum cleaners. And I was down in the floor on my knees and I was working. I was, I don't know, 45, 47, somewhere in there. I'd never had a back problem in my life. I'd never had a back pain. And I'll be honest with you, at that point in my life, I was just pretty sure that everybody who said they had back problems was just lazy. Hey, don't be amen too loud back here, okay. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm confessing my sin here, okay. I was pretty, I was pretty judgmental. 
uh, a young man, <laughs> I had a lot to learn, and I was pretty judgmental and pretty critical, and I just figured people with, la with back problems were just copping out, and they didn't want to work, and they were just lazy, sitting around doing nothing. And I was back there in the middle of the floor working on that vacuum cleaner, and it felt like somebody hit me with a ball bat right across that lower part of my back. I spent five days brook in bed right next door at, this, at the house over here and couldn't get out of bed hardly. I whined worse than a man with a man cold. I mean, I, I, was, I was a baby. I was a wimp. I'm telling you, it messed me up. I never accused nobody with back problems of being lazy since, okay? Five days it messed me up. And, but but, but, but it, it, it is so, so, so it's important to understand. I'm, I'm not judging you. And, and I'm not trying to judge anybody. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, John? I remember that. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I, I read these passages and and they I come up with some characteristics of a lazy person and back troubles not one of them. Okay, so so I wanted just wanted to share that. Okay. Um, the, uh, one of the issues, what, the Proverbs 26, 13. We're going to walk through a few verses here. Proverbs 26, 13. The lazy person claims there's a lion on the road. Yes, and I'm sure there's a lion out there. The first characteristic that I found here that listed in this short list uh, of a lazy person is fear. I'm afraid if I go, I'm, a, I'm afraid. Fear it is one of the characteristics that will cause us to be disengaged, non-connected, a lazy person. Uh, and I'm not going to spend a great long time on each of these, but we all struggle with our own fears. That's why that song to, to, to us is so important. Fear is a liar. Fear is a liar, that song? Anybody remember it? Fear is a liar? Uh, it, it, fear, and, and you know, fear is one of those things that we fight. We all fight inside our brain. It's the battlefield for the mind, Joyce Meyer says. I remember many years ago when I first uh, got into the personality profiles with, jo with uh, Florence Littower and the four profiles that we use, the sanguine, choleric, melancholy, phlegmatic, those four terms that we use. And if you don't know what those are, I'd be happy to enlighten you after service, okay? But I took the little quiz, and my personality, a sanguine, is my second personality. Uh, and and uh, one of the characteristics of a sanguine is fear. And I remember I got many, many, many spankings. Even when I was... Uh, you know, uh, big boy's age over here. Um, yeah, when I, was, when I was your age, buddy, I used to be so afraid of the dark. I was so afraid of the dark, dude. I mean, we, we, had, a, we had an old well about 15, 20 feet out our back door. It was an old, one of those uh, uh, terracotta, I mean, cement 12-inch well casings, and we'd fill it up with dirt. And had a little crescent on top of it. And it was a perfect dog bowl for our dogs. And so that's where we fed our dogs. And I'd have to go out and take the slop out to the dogs at night. And I mean, I was scared. I, I would just walk in that distance. I'd beg my mom to hold the door open so the light would shine out there so I could go out there. And, pour. I, and then I, I get to be an adult and I'm still struggling with certain fears and working with it. And I read this little, and I don't, never told very few people at all about that fear. It was huge. I was a afraid of the dark. Uh, I was like that little boy who, who was afraid of the dark and his mama told him to go out and get the broom off the porch and he, uh, and, and he wouldn't go out there and get the broom and he, his mama said, son, it's okay, Jesus is out there. He'll protect you. It's okay. He said, are you sure Jesus is out there? He said, yeah, I'm sure. So the little boy goes, okay. So he goes to the front door and he said, Jesus, would you hand me the broom? <laughs> 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 so that's how I was. That was me. 
And I read this deal on, uh, on uh, the uh, sanguine personality. One of our number one weaknesses is fear. We struggle with fear. So, so and, and, and I love my, he, one of my heroes, one of my childhood heroes, John Wayne. He says, courage is being afraid and saddling up anyway. Many, 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 many things are done in life by people who are afraid. We do them anyway. We've got to work on that fear. All right, I've got to move. Verse 14. As a door swings back and forth on its hinges, so a lazy person turns over in bed. <laughs> you don't understand, man. My, with my condition, I need 10, 12 hours sleep a day. That's highly unlikely, but maybe, I don't know. But, um, um, so the second characteristics of a lazy person might, could be too much sleep. Let's move forward. I'll leave that alone right there, okay? Uh, verse 15. <laughs> Lazy people take their food in their hands, but they don't even lift it up to their mouth. Uh, now you say, okay, there's nobody that quite that bad. Well, I, I'm just reading the verse, okay? But here's what I deducted from that. A lazy person doesn't take care of even their own personal self their own personal hygiene, their own personal self. A lazy person is just too lazy to take a shower, too lazy to clean up, too lazy to, to, to do. Um, boy, in this last one, whoo! Verse 16. Lazy people consider themselves smarter than seven wise counselors. So I would say the fourth characteristic here of a lazy person is they're quite conceited, arrogant. Um, you know, I read, I heard a preacher preach when I was in college. Well, early in my first church, I think. I heard a radio preacher preaching and he really shocked me. I was really, really I totally disagreed with him. I thought he was an idiot. Just talking, meddling, didn't know what he was talking about. He said, many workaholics are lazy people. I thought, it's crazy. Workaholic can't be lazy. That's, not, that's ridiculous. And here's what he said. He said, a lot of times in our work, we work at what we know and what we love and what we enjoy. And we will stay 12, 14 hours a day doing what we enjoy so we don't have to go home and do stuff we don't enjoy. So we don't go home and face things at home that we're not comfortable in, that we're not skilled at, that we don't like. So it's easy for us, all of us, to think we know more than we actually do. That's why we say the little joke about hiring a teenager while they still know everything. Because when they get older, they won't realize, they'll hopefully realize they don't know everything. I got to hurry. Proverbs 24, 30. I walk by the field of a lazy person, the vineyard of one with no common sense. I thought that was interesting that he equated lazy person and no common sense. Could be a, another characteristic. Verse 31, I saw that it was overgrown with nettles. It was covered with weeds and its walls were broken down. Then I looked and I thought about it, and I learned this lesson. Here's the lesson that he deducted from the lazy person's vineyard. Verse 33. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Verse 34. 
then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit and scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. I really do think most of us struggle with the whole work lazy. I mean, I get tired. Uh, I, 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 I get tired. I, my personality, I think I'm a little ADD. What do you think? Maybe. Uh, I, I, uh, I am high energy. I get it. That's my personality. That's my sanguine uh, personality. I'm a little high energy. I, 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 I got more things going on. A lot of times I'll get more accomplished by accident than I, some people do on purpose. I get that. But I also spin a lot of wheels and waste a lot of time if I'm not careful. And, I, and if, I, if I don't, I have to really work on that. And, and so we all have our struggles. My struggle may be too busy. Your struggle may be not busy enough. All of us need to find that balance in our life. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today is think about uh, that, that finding that balance. Uh, the, the last part of this verse says the way of the upright, the way of the diligent. And, and I, I found a few verses that talk about being diligent. And that's the point I want to leave with you today is not being lazy, but being diligent. Practicing and developing what the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, calls endurance. And there's a bunch of verses, you can look those up on your own, about diligence. About uh, the that trials and troubles and problems in our life develop diligence. And one of the biggest problems in our culture today, and has been for years is when we engage in drugs and alcohol or other forms of entertainment that consume us, it can be video games, it can be gambling, it can be pornography, it can be food that consume us, it can be soap operas, it can be movies, it can be uh, drugs, alcohol, anything to numb us out from focusing on what needs to be done and being diligent. When we have troubles in our life, those troubles in our life will help us grow in our endurance. Those troubles will help us grow in our endurance if we don't run from them. But one of the biggest things that the human nature, the natural response to do is run from them. We run to alcohol, we run to drugs, we run to, to, to TV, we run to food, we run to our go-to whatever to get our mind off of dealing with these problems. I hate the problems! Welcome to the club. I hate problems too. I like peace, joy, and love. I like everybody happy. I hate drama. I like peace and love and joy. Pass the bowl. Smoke some more dope. <laughs> Peace, baby. Chill. Crack another beer. Let's chill. All that does is postpone it. It kicks the can a little further down the road. Doesn't fix anything. Face our fears. Face our struggles. James chapter 1, don't be afraid facing those fears. If your life is filled with difficulties, James says, let it be an opportunity for great joy. You've got to be kidding me. With all the mess going on in my life, I ain't going to have no money, I can't work, I got this, I got that, my wife left, my husband left, this, 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 this left. Well, all, all these problems, and you telling me I count it as an opportunity for joy? No, I'm not telling you that. The Bible tells you that. You can try to translate that one differently too, but there it is. When your life is filled with difficulties, don't escape reality. Face it. 
Every time you're tempted to go get high, every time you're tempted to go get drunk, every time you're tempted to go back to the video game, back to the gambling, every time you're tempted to go to the pornography, realize you're just escaping reality because that garbage is not reality. That garbage is not reality. So important. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. Seek God's will in everything you do, and he will show you the path to take. Psalm 32, I love this one, verse 8. The Lord said, I will guide you along the best path for your life. I will advise you and I will watch over you. If you just read that verse alone right there and live in that verse alone right there, that would change your life. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best path for your life. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, I, yeah, but I, I, I want to go this way, Lord. Yeah, I, no, no, I don't want, I don't want to do that. I don't want to work at McDonald's. I want to work. I, I want to do this. I, I don't want to. I, I. God said he would lead us. Than the best path for our life. And not only that, but I'll give you advice as you go and I'll watch over you. You can't get a better deal than that. And if you're disabled and you can't work and you got to be home, you can volunteer at the office, which we miss you uh, two or three days a week. You know, I'm just saying we can get up there and we can get it and we can do it. We can do something. I can't do a lot, but I can make some phone calls. I can shoot some texts. I can go to convalescent home and read the Bible to some old, old, old folks that are blind. There's a thousand things. Brother Don used to go to the old folks home and play bingo with the old guys down there that couldn't. They used to go play bingo with Cully. Uh, Lynn. He, uh, Leah, he'd go down there and play bingo with Cully at the old folks home. You know what a joy that was to see him come and see. I mean, I mean we, we all got something we can do. Don't sit at home and be bored and be lonely and be, be depressed. Let's make someone else's life a better place. Verse 9, don't be like a senseless horse or mule that you need a bit and a bridle to keep you under control. <laughs> Verse 10, many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds those who trust the Lord. So rejoice. Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. So rejoice and be glad. All you who obey him. Shout for joy. All you with a pure heart. No, I didn't say that. I'm reading you the Bible. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. I just don't shout for joy. Well, when are you going to start? Well, it's just not who I am. It's not who I am either. So, oh, yes, it is. No, it's who I've become. Because I practiced it for a long time. Yes, my wife. I, 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 I just I, I shout and rejoicing in the Lord. Sing, singing. You heard me sing. I don't sing so good. But me and the Lord, the Lord don't care. He likes my singing. He's the only one. <laughs> likes my singing. Miriam don't even like my singing. Okay, The Lord is the only one that likes my singing. So I sing to the Lord. He appreciates it. <laughs> don't get depressed. Down in a hole. Get up. Call somebody. Sit there and think for a minute. You know, I wonder what pastor's doing today. I had a phone call the other day from a guy that I haven't heard from in over a year. He don't even go to our church. He goes to another church. He's a business guy I'm associated with, and I'll be very vague about it. But he called me up the other day, and he said, hey, pastor. I said, he still he calls me pastor. I said, yeah. He said, hey, this is, I'll just call him John. He said, I, I just want you to know, I just want you to know I was thinking about you. How you doing? I haven't talked to you in, in a while, and I just had you on my mind, and I just wanted to call you. Dude, made my day. I mean, I felt really awesome. The dude was thinking about me and praying for me. I'm going to tell you something. I can count on one hand in the last number of years that that's happened. Maybe long time years. I... So, oh, pastor, you got so many people and you're so busy and you. 
Well, whatever you believe, it's all good. You get all kind of people telling you, you do too. You got all people telling you how good you are, how great you are, how much they appreciate you, don't you? You got people calling you every other day telling you how much they think about you, Brooke, down there. Just to just say, hey, man, how you doing? Checking on you. Yeah, we got people call every day, don't we? No, we don't. Don't be lazy. Be upright. Be diligent. I want to close with uh, the last two, ver the two verses, two my life verses. I read one of them earlier, but I'm going to read them both now, five and six. Here's the secret. Th uh, chapter three, verse five and six, Laura Lee. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own dumb understanding. Dumb my insertion. Say, so, Pastor, are you calling me dumb? I'm just reading, okay, inserting a little bit, okay? I'm a, um, don't depend on your own understanding. Verse 6, seek God's will in everything you do, and he will show you which path to take. Would you stand? Uh, go home and read Psalm 1. You'll be blessed by Psalm 1 if you haven't read lately. It's a great verse. Psalm 1. Thank you, Lord. For our time together. And God I pray that you'd help us to. Open up our hearts. And be willing to admit. We struggle. Whether we struggle with fear. We struggle with laziness. We struggle with insecurities. Struggle with a lack of self confidence. Whatever it is we struggle with. God all of us at one time or another struggle. Help us, Father, to trust in you with all of our heart. To not believe the lies that we tell ourselves and the devil tells us. Not believe those lies, but believe the truth of your word. That when we feel like we don't belong, you say we are yours. When we feel like nobody likes us here on the planet, we know you love us. And we belong to you. So help us today to put our trust in you. Lean not to our own understanding. To acknowledge you in all our ways. And we know, God, you'll watch over us and direct our path. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tolerating me seven minutes over. Woo! Terrible.